I've played every Garden of Ban Ban game twice. Streamed all of it on my second channel the day it came out. Made six videos about it. Seven including this one. And here I am. Deep into the Garden of Ban Ban sauce. 15 plus hours of my life wasted away. I've told myself that I wouldn't make this video. But I can't help myself anymore. I need to complete the ritual. Now it is true that I've talked quite quite a bit of crap about these games in the last year or so simply because it is just such an easy target to make fun of so uh, let's get the most obvious thing out of the way all right this franchise is it's just one gigantic practical joke that got way out of hand everyone knows this the entire series is so unbelievably absurd that it has become comical but it is kind of funny. So what I want to do with this video is honestly go over the entire Garden of Ban Ban series in a nice, simple, compact video. A classic down-to-earth FOCO review. So make sure you're sitting comfortable with a big bowl of popcorn and a cup of gamer subs because this video is going to be something. Let's start off with the basics. Garden of Ban Ban is a mascot horror series in the same vein as Five Nights at Freddy's and especially poppy playtime they just straight up copied their homework you play as a parent that is looking for their lost child in a kindergarten filled with clay like monsters and each chapter takes place on a new floor where more wacky chaos indoors uh, look all right i could sit here and explain you the entire story but i just know that it's a mess things just randomly happen for no real reason the main monsters flip flop from good and evil every 20 minutes choo choo charles randomly appears you get run over by a bus ban ban turns into a demon that is puppeted by stinger flynn who is a giant for one chapter everyone turns into an evil counterpart like their shadow the hedgehog there is something about a magic scepter and the naughty ones that escape from the pouch of the kangaroo queen bouncelina because bitter giggle told her a joke you get interrogated by a toad jumbo josh eats broccoli at one point it's complete other nonsense and trying to make sense of it is just pointless. Now usually these types of games have a lot of characters which is one of their main selling points. Um, FNAF has over a hundred animatronics, Poppy Playtime has toys, My Friendly Neighborhood has puppets, Bendy and the Ink Machine has ink demons, even Hello Neighbor has different types of neighbors. And honestly it's fun seeing all the wacky, zany, cool or creepy characters the developers came up with. And these type of games usually have a theme that they can group their monsters into. Even something as crappy as Baldi's Basics still has a theme. But in Garden of Ban Ban, they are just colorful blobs that sometimes represent an animal. What is this supposed to be? Or this? Or this? Again, they are just blobs of clay with god-awful models and crappy textures. Now, I'm not an expert when it comes to character modeling or UV mapping, but people online have extracted some of the models of Garden of Ban Ban, and you can see with a single glare that something is oh so wrong to put it in perspective how awfully these models are made all right mario from mario 64 has 838 polygons the heavy from tf2 has 4728 polygons and banjo from super smash bros ultimate has 16421 polygons this stupid remote from garden of bam bam that you hold for the entire game which you can't unequip has 180 4,000 polygons. That's more than 220 times the polygons compared to Mario from Mario 64, which is absurd. This thing exists out of a square, a cylinder, and a rod. That's it. And it has more polygons than the entirety of Mario 64. Not just the Mario model, the entire game. How do you mess this up so badly? Besides the amount of polygons also being straight up unnecessary and making the model super cluttered to work with behind the scenes, especially with these awful UV maps, it also has the bonus effect of making these games run like complete doo-doo, especially when you introduce ray tracing into the mix. Yes, these games have ray tracing for some reason and I'm not sure why. Then you have the art direction, to which I say, what's art direction? Because most of your 
time playing Garden of Ban Ban is spent in square boxes filled with default light sources and pre-made assets that the devs bought off the Unreal Engine store. There is no real art style here, it is just a mess of basic shapes and illustrator drawings. This place is supposed to be a kindergarten, right? It's in the name, Garden of Ban Ban. Why the hell is it filled with the bottomless pits, prison cells, throne rooms and Roblox obby courses? Nothing of it makes sense. But all of this garbage that I've talked about so far doesn't really matter in the big picture of everything because everybody on planet earth plays a game to game and personally I'm a hardcore gamer I play to win I don't care about puny graphics or art direction I am here for the gameplay which is walking. This is 60% of the entire game. You walking from point A to point B. The other 40% is filled with puzzles and characters mindlessly yapping, aka padding so they can reach the two hour mark. Very convenient. Hmm. Also, these puzzles absolutely reek. They are way too unclear and vague. And no, it's not because I work for IGN, okay? I am very smart. That's the best way I can explain the game. Gameplay. It is a confusing glob. The Euphoric Brothers, who are the devs, aren't really interested in making a cool piece of art, a neat game. Instead, they are way too focused on making the next FNAF, the next Poppy Playtime, which you know, I guess it's working. Kids, eat this trash up, man. It's Unreal Engine. The Garden of Ben Ben trailers on YouTube get millions upon millions of views, and even the official YouTube channel, the official official one commented on one of these trailers, which is just absolutely nuts. In less than a year time, without even really trying, the Euphoric Brothers have managed to morph this piece of crap series into a mascot horror staple that sit next to the big boys, and you got one group of people to thank for that. Little baby boo boo kids! I will never forget when I went to Australia a few months ago and me and Cyber decided to go to a market where we found a bunch of bootleg Garden of Ban Ban plushies. We took a couple of pictures to show to our friends and then not even 20 seconds later we heard a group of four kids screaming towards us. Jumbo Josh! Jumbo Josh! When I heard that I felt like this. I'm getting old. The thing is, these games are gonna keep popping up left and right because it's just printing money for the devs, for creators, for small shop owners, and people seem to somewhat like it, I, I think. And that includes me. These games might be of poor quality, but I'm gonna keep playing them because I'm stupid as hell. So in conclusion, Garden of Ban Ban is an absolutely awful series. It's poorly made, buggy, lazy, it is just bad. But all of those criticisms can be wiped away with one simple response. It is kind of funny to ironically play. $10 for chapter 7 please, thank you and goodbye. Use code FOCO for 10% off gamer subs, smiley face.